Hey, my name is Brittany Blackstock. I am one of the assistant director career consultants here in the UAB Career Center. I wanted to take a minute to talk about resumes with you today. So a few of the takeaways that I want you to be cognizant of is that students will, by the end of this presentation, um, be able to identify effectively, um, be able to identify and effectively utilize the basic components of a resume. Number two, we want to make sure that you understand the basis of a resume accomplishment statement using what we call an APR formula or format or method. Number three, we want to make sure that students will be able to articulate their understanding of an applicant tracking system and how to tailor your specific resume to a specific position using keywords. So standing out in a crowd, when you think about standing out in a crowd, um, look to your left, look to your right. Typically the person next to you in class would be someone that you would be up against if you're applying for the same position and if it's competitive. So now you ask yourself, how do I stand out amongst that crowd? So first for the resume basics, you want to make sure at the top of the page that you include your name and your contact information. Of course, after that, you want to create different sections. Um, the next one is optional. So the profile, summary statement, summary of qualifications, um, just the summary or just the profile statement, those things are um, optional. They work really well when you're able to use them and use them correctly, but indeed optional. Another category that you want to have on your resume is the education section. Please make sure that you include that you are a student at UAB. And the fourth, and I will say final, but the fourth section that's highly recommended as a basic is experience. Um, I like to say that experience is experience is experience, no matter if you are relating that to a specific field or if you have just professional or work experience. So let's dive in, into the name and contact information. There are a few things that you can do here. You can um, make sure that it's on the right face tank, right justified, left justified, or in the center. Um, you don't want to do too much, but you just want to keep it simple. Terrell Johnson, he has all of his information listed, um, exact address, um, UAB email address where he can be notified and phone number. Now I shouldn't have to say it out loud, but I want to make sure that you're following best practices. Please make sure that you include an email address that you answer, as well as a phone, call, a phone message or a phone that you answer as well. These need to be ways in which people can actually get in contact with you. So the worst thing that you can do is put an email address that's outdated and you no longer email or you no longer check. You do not have to include your address. It's completely optional. Um, some people are very traditional where they want to make sure they have all of their information laid out, but this is not a, this is not a mandatory thing. If you feel uncomfortable with letting someone know exactly where you live, especially if you're putting your resume on several different sites, you may want to add an extra layer of privacy by not including your address. I do want to point out that you want to make sure that the font is really strong. Um, you don't want to add any decorative font. You want to really stay away from that. But you want to make sure that it's something that doesn't have um, fancy notches or um, maybe cursive writing that may be a little bit harder to recognize for someone who has a visual acuity. So moving on to your profile statement or your summary statement or like what I like to use, summary of qualifications. Um, again, this is completely optional, but if you use it to your advantage, um, you can certainly use it wisely and it can work for you. Say, for example, you are sitting on the couch at home and all of a sudden the hottest movie of the summer comes on. The trailer, the, the trailer of the hottest movie of the summer comes on and you realize by the end of that trailer that you either want to see the movie or not so much. It's the same way with the profile statement. It kind of gives the employer a glimpse into who you are and how you could potentially add value to the particular department, company, or industry. So you can do it in a number of ways. Um, one, you can do it in bullet format, or two, you can do it in a summary format. 
keep in mind summary is different from sentence, okay? So if you were to do it in the profile bullet format, you would list things that you're just really proud of. What were you able to accomplish in the experiences that you had that set you, um, I guess make it a little bit more advantageous for you to move on to the next round. So if we look at our example, so undergraduate research scientist with experience in genetics and molecular biology. This statement does not hold much weight on its own, simply because this is UAB. There could be a number of students that have experience in labs um, under genetics and molecular biology. So it's not as specific. However, when you combine it with the second bullet point that says three years of experience working in a lab, that makes my ears perk up. That makes me think as an employer or a recruiter, hmm, I don't have to um, invest that much training in this particular candidate because they already have the foundation of three years in a laboratory. And that's really great. That's what I'm looking for, someone with experience. And then also just to add another layer, when you combine experience with writing and editing grants, that's amazing. I'm really able to have a, a critical eye in maybe the things that I read, maybe the manuscripts, maybe what I wanna publish. If I choose to share it with my student, that would be an extra set of eyes looking at it to make sure that I am bringing forth my best self. Moving on to education. Education is really important. You want to make sure that this is where you really start to get into the correct format with your reverse chronological order. This is something that you want to make sure that you start with your current or, more, or most recent school. So of course, your students at UAB, you want to make sure that you're spelling out University of Alabama at Birmingham. You also want to make sure that you spell out Birmingham, Alabama. I have a colleague that actually worked at Miami University. And of course, when I um, was introduced and I started learning more about Miami University, I thought, wow, you know, that's really cool that you've lived in Florida, um, that's neat. But I never heard him say anything about Florida. So I later realized that I made the assumption that Miami University was in Florida, Miami, Florida, however, it is in Ohio. So you wanna make sure that you actually put the city and state of where that institution is located. So you close the gap um, and pretty much not allow um, anyone else to create a narrative for you, okay? Now you do wanna make sure that you're putting your specific degree. So whatever your diploma or your degree will say, that's what you wanna put on your resume. Even if you're a pre-nursing student, you wanna make sure you spell out Bachelors of Science in Nursing, okay? Um, bachelors of Arts in History. You wanna make sure you spell it out, okay? And then because you are still currently in school, you wanna make sure you use something along the lines of anticipated or expected. If you have additional degrees, such as maybe community college degrees or another degree from another institution, um, maybe a bachelor's degree, you wanna make sure that you put those again in reverse chronological order. So you start where you are and, and work your way back. Moving on to experience. You wanna make sure that you start these in reverse chronological order. This is something that's gonna be really, really important to really solidify or paint a picture as to your experience. And if I didn't say it earlier, your resume is really just a story. It really is a story of your experience, what you can do to potentially add value to that company, okay? So for your experience, you'll see here that you list the particular department or company. So UAB Alumni Relations is the department. It is in Birmingham, Alabama. Keep in mind that we do want to keep the city and state. Then on the second line, you want to list your position. So for here, it's communication intern. And then of course, you wanna add the, the time frame of when you are employed there, okay? And I'm saying employed, but this may also be volunteer, okay? That's fine too. So then you wanna get into the, um, the APR statements. 
I believe we'll go over that in just a little bit, but you do want to make sure that you're crafting statements that show a reflection of what you actually do. So for this communication intern, they actually have four APR statements, which is really good. These are some examples. So design communication and marketing creatives with Adobe Creative Suite software. Create social media content and schedule to maintain those particular handles. Draft press releases for alumni events to increase participation in alumni events. Plan and execute four alumni breakfast events, increasing alumni participation by 25%. So some of these sound like SMART goals, but the main thing is they are complete statements. They're complete statements. So they're not just simply duties that you've done, but they're complete statements that kind of paint a picture of um, in your impact. And I like to call these statements impact statements as well. So let's just go through a few more examples of experience. What you'll notice is that the font is plain and simple. Again, it's nothing fancy. There's no blue, green, red, purple. There's nothing that um, is trying to dress it up, but the words alone make an impact, okay? So for your particular research position, collected, recorded, and analyzed data, conducted direct literature searches, as a research assistant, this is really important work because you're really helping out the researcher or the principal investigator. Wrote and edited grant proposals. Contributed to research on the role of oxalate, <laughs> hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly, and oxobacterial form formagenes and calcium oxitate kidney stone disease. Hopefully I got that correct, that was a mouthful. But these things will allow recruiters and employers to ask questions. So all of these things, keep in mind, that are on your resume, they are fair game for employers to um, ask questions, which is really good. If you have it on your resume, be prepared to talk more in detail about your experiences. Okay. So here are a few more examples. You remember I told you earlier that experience is experience is experience? So the first one at the top is showing me an example of maybe someone that's interested in teaching. So this is their student experience. So they um, had an experiential learning component in their coursework where they needed to be a student teacher at a, at a maybe um, particular school or a um, provided school but developed and implemented semester long first grade lesson plans. So these are definitely great things to add. So you have specific details that even um, mentions COVID. And those are things, you know, your resilience in this season is very important as well. So you wanna make sure that you're actually illustrating your particular impact, okay? So let's get to how these impacts happen. So with your accomplishment statements, this is, when, this is what I like to call the meat of the matter. In your accomplishment statements, you have the opportunity to engage three different areas. APR, A stands for action, P stands for problem and or project, R stands for result, APR. That's the APR format, APR model, whatever you'd like to call it. This will help you make a complete bulleted statement, okay? So with your action, you wanna ask yourself, what did you do? What did I do that I need to remember? Um, another thing for the P, what were or are the circumstances, conditions, and challenges? And the R, what are the results? Sometimes the results are hard to come by, but what are those results um, that happened as a result of your action? So one of the things in the career guide that um, kind of prompts the question is, how do I want to demonstrate that I am qualified for this particular position or this particular program? How do I want to demonstrate that I'm qualified? And you do this in your APR statement. So reflect on that, okay? APR, here's an example. So for the A, coordinated. When I think about the word coordinated, I think of someone who takes the initiative someone who maybe did a needs assessment and determined that something needed to change or something needed to happen. 
So they took the initiative by coordinating something. So that's our action verb, coordinate. Our P is five fundraising events for a local animal shelter. So that's a project. It's not a problem right now, but it's a project to work on, those five fundraising events. The problem is homelessness, okay? So as a result of you coordinating these fundraising events, you raised over $5,000 which was 20% above the goal and probably improved community awareness around homelessness. So that's a really good statement. Let me read it together. Coordinated five fundraising events for a local homeless shelter, raising over $5,000, which was 20% above the goal. That shows your impact. That's far greater than saying, I had good customer service, okay? Another example that my colleague likes to use is you could say that you have that you're um, CPR certified, but you could also say that you save five lives using CPR techniques. Which one holds greater weight? The fact that you're just subjectively saying, hey, I'm, I'm CPR certified, or the fact that you're saying how you used it, how, you, how that impacted your performance. So hopefully you're recognizing the difference, okay? So the applicant tracking system, this is something that's very neat. So at UAB, lots of departments do not have the luxury of having a resident resume reader. For those bigger positions, we do actually have to go through HR. And with HR, um, this is the number one employer in Alabama. And there's no possible way that an HR department can possibly read um, the thousands or hundreds or thousands of applicants that come in for different positions. So we use what's called an ATS, ATS, which stands for Applicant Tracking System. With the Applicant Tracking System, what it is is basically it's a software that lifts words, buzzwords off of your resume to see if you really read the job description, to see whether or not you might be a good fit for this particular position. So if you look on your screen, you'll see a job description for a digital content specialist. Everything that's bolded or highlighted in red is pretty much, um, they're, they're buzzwords that stand out to that particular candidate. So communications, integrated community strategies, digital presence, digital tactics, marketing, all of these words stand out to that particular candidate. That also has bachelor's degree in public relations, it has different handles, Twitter, Facebook, Pinterest, Instagram, um, Google Analytics is something that's also used. So these are very specific targeted things that this particular company is looking for. And the best thing that you can do is filter those highlighted words into your resume, or dare I say, throughout your resume, so that it at least proves that you have read the job description, but also your qualifications match up with that description. So a few other tips that I have to share with you today is making sure that you're cognizant of the length. Of course, that's kind of a big question. Lots of people think about, well, I know that my resume only has to be one page, but not necessarily. The resume can be longer, it can be two pages, but the rule is your resume should be one page for every 10 years of experience, okay? So you wanna make sure that you're not too hung up on the length Again, the rule is one page for every 10 years. Of course, starting out, based on what you have experience in, you may have one page. But if you are very active, um, of course, that would warrant you to have additional pages. You just want to make sure that there's a reason for you to extend that one page rule or that one page best practice. With the margins, you want to make sure that your words are not spilling off of the page. Of course, you can manipulate the margins, but typically we would say that the top and bottom need to be no less than 0.5 inches. And for the right and the left parameters, you wanna make sure that you stay around 0.7 if you need to stretch it out. Otherwise, the normal margins are perfectly fine. Earlier, I mentioned the specific fonts. You wanna make sure that you're using a non or sans serif font. These are things like, um, Arial, Calibri, Century Gothic, um, those types of fonts. Um, so that means no Times New Roman, no Century, no Courier. 
And that's simply because those last fonts that I mentioned have little notches on it and little strokes that make it a little bit harder for someone with a visual acuity, especially if they're looking at resumes all day. It can just be a little fancy for someone who may need, a dis need some assistance visually. Also, you want to make sure that you stay away from words like I, me, them, they, or theirs. Again, you're making statements, so they don't have to be complete sentences. I like to say that you can save the sentences for your cover letter or for your essay or for your um, ability when you have ch a chance to expound upon what's on your resume. Your resume is a summary of what you've done. It's not an essay or a, a paper of what you've done, okay? Another thing, please do not put at the bottom of your resume references available upon request. Um, if employers and recruiters need that information, they will certainly ask for it. And there's a formula for that. Um, what you would simply do is copy and paste your contact information from your resume, start a new document, paste that information on the new document, and then you would write references and list maybe two to three references depending on how many is requested okay you can also add your linkedin handle of course if you do that you want to make sure that your linkedin is updated um, you can personalize the url so it can be professional and it doesn't have to have all of those numbers and symbols in it so of course if you'd like to add that just make sure that your linkedin account is up to date and that you actually use it you can get in contact with us through the through the information that's on the screen. Feel free to send us an email. Feel free to join us and engage with us on um, social media, as well as use your handshake. Handshake is a wonderful tool for you to be able to engage and dive into the Career Center resources. So as a result of this presentation or this workshop, you should be able to identify the basics and effectively utilize components for your resume, the name and contact information, your profile statement, your education, and your experience. Additional categories can be added as well. Number two, wanna make sure that you understand the resume accomplishment statements using the APR formula. And then number three, you'll be able to articulate the understanding of the applicant tracking system, ATS, and how to tailor your specific resume to a specific position. I hope this um, has been really helpful for you, but you do have a little bit of homework. So we wanna make sure that you begin building your personal resume. It does not have to be perfect, but the earlier you start it, the better, okay? You wanna make sure that you complete the Career Center Canvas course that is, at, that is accessible for every student, okay? You can locate that in Canvas. Go ahead and schedule an appointment with your career consultant. We've reviewed them. If you do have any questions, feel free to email me through Handshake. Also make sure that you complete your Handshake profile. And then I strongly, lastly, encourage you to attend a Career Center event. So please make sure that you engage with our office. And thank you so much.